Hello. It's a pleasure for me to give this talk where I describe some of the work done in my research group at Tampere University together with uh, several of my group members and collaborators. And throughout the talk, we're going to focus on a single control problem, namely the robust output regulation problem for linear partial differential equation models. And in this situation, we consider a partial differential equation system uh, together with some dedicated inputs U, some measured outputs from the system Y, along with some external disturbance signal W. And as the main goal of the output regulation problem, we have to design a controller or control input in such a way that the measured output Y of the system converges asymptotically to, the, to a given reference signal Y ref as T goes to infinity and all this happens despite the external disturbance signal W. And in addition, the controller is required to be robust in the sense that the same controller will also work even if the parameters of the partial differential equation model contain some uncertainty or experience some small changes. The output regulation problem for PDE models is an interesting mathematical problem, but it's also relevant in several engineering applications, such as in uh, temperature control in manufacturing processes, or tracking and tra tra trajectory control for robotic manipulators containing flexible parts, or in disturbance rejection and noise and vibration reduction for engineering machinery. And the robustness aspect of the controller is of course important from the point of view of uh, tolerating model uncertainty, which is inevitable in all applications where we model some real life processes. But as another very important and in interesting aspect is that robustness also allows us to reliably use approximation techniques when choosing to control a parameter. So it's possible to use approximations when we are tuning the controller. In the first part of this talk, I'm going to discuss just very background, uh, very basic introductory and background results in the theory of robust output regulation. And I'm also going to consider and discuss several aspects of the controller design for, uh, for PDE models. And in the second part, on the other hand, I'm going to con focus on some more specific uh, recent results that we have obtained in the control of parabolic PDEs and I'm going to also describe how these have been applied in our group in the control, control of temperatures and fluid flows. So starting from the very beginning in the robust output regulation problem we consider reference and disturbance signals and classically they're assumed to be, have very specific forms, like the one shown here. Both of them consist of a finite number of frequency components uh, with some known frequencies omega and possibly unknown amplitude and phase coefficients. And it's more uh, it's possible to generalize these classes to signals containing also uh, uh, polynomially growing factors and terms or an infinite number of frequency components but in this presentation we're going to stick with this class and one of the uh, important aspects indeed here is that we assume the frequencies omega k to be known and uh, while in the, and on the side of the reference signals, this still provides us with a very rich class of reference signals that we can consider. 
because they in particular contain uh, uh, arbitrarily accurate approximations of any periodic signals. On the other hand, from the disturbance rejection point of view, you could argue that no, the assumption of knowing the frequencies might be a limitation. But in practical situations, the frequencies can often be estimated. And on the other hand, limiting, the, uh, limiting our attention to this class of signals uh, gives us the opportunity to solve our control problem under very, very mild assumptions. So from the controller uh, design point of view, this is a very nice assumption. And as our controller design structure, we consider error, dynamic error feedback controller, where we aim to design another dynamical system called the controller, which takes as its input the error between the actual output y and the intended reference signal y ref, and as its output it produces the control signal to our plant. And as I said, the um, controller problem, the robust output regulation problem is solvable under fairly mild assumptions on our original system. And roughly stated in very general terms, the required assumptions are that the, our original system is stabilizable and detectable in a suitable sense. And in addition, the, our system shouldn't contain any transmission zeros at the complex frequencies that appear in the reference and disturbance signals Y ref. So, and this second uh, condition basically means that if we take any of the individual frequencies appearing in, in our two signals and input this kind of a pure one frequency signal to our system, then we should also observe this frequency asymptotically in the output of our system. And there's a very nice and well-developed theory behind the robust output regulation problem, which dates back to the 1970s. And there's also one very standout result, which is called the internal model principle, which can be used to characterize all the dynamic error feedback controllers, which can be used in solving the robust output regulation problem. And the internal model principle stated in general terms tells us that a particular a dynamic error feedback controller solves the robust output regulation problem precisely if the controller stabilizes the closed loop system consisting of our plant and our controller in a suitable sense. And in addition, the controller has a so-called internal model of all of the frequencies that are in our reference and disturbance signals that we consider in our problem. And this uh, internal model, again, can be formulated in several different ways, but roughly stated, it means that for each, fre each frequency in our reference and disturbance signals should also correspond to an eigenmode in the controller dynamics and the multiplicity of this eigenmode should equal to at least the number of independent outputs of our system, meaning just simply the length of the measurement vector y. And the internal model principle is a really nice theoretical result, but, but it also has a very fundamental impact on the controller design for robust output regulation. And in particular, this result says, tells us that in order to solve the robust output regulation problem with a controller, we need to achieve two things. First of all, 
we need to include a suitable internal model of our reference and disturbance signals into the controller dynamics. And in addition to this, we need to uh, achieve closed loop stability for the uh, feedback structure containing the plant and the controller. And of these two parts, step one is something that's usually uh, easier to solve because it can be uh, achieved with suitable structural design by which guarantees these eigenvalue properties for our controller dynamics. And on the other hand, uh, achieving the closed loop stability is often the main challenge in designing the controller. And this can also, but on the other hand, this can also be attacked using suitable types of controller structures that I'm going to also describe momentarily. But before going more deeply into the controller design, I'll, I'll take a moment to talk about the history of the internal model principle and development of the theory. So, as I mentioned, the internal model principle was first developed for finite dimensional linear systems in the 1970s, and this is due to the uh, work of Francis and Wonham and independently Davison. And this re the, the work for extending this result for linear partial differential equations began quite immediately afterwards. So in his thesis, Pat, who was a student of Heike Koivo and Wonham in Toronto, used this uh, so-called geometric approach to extend parts of the internal model principles for distributed parameter systems. And more recently, this work was continued by Eero Immon and also at Tampere University. And he developed a kind of a background theory and state-space methods for investigating internal model structures for distributed parameter systems and he was especially using this Sylvester operator equation type techniques in doing this. And in my own PhD thesis I continued the work of Eero Immonen and was able to build on this to in order to derive a more classical form of the internal model principle which is then applicable for linear PDE systems. And I also continued on this topic after my PhD and uh, I extended the internal model principle for different classes of systems with which can also include PDEs with boundary control and observation. And the references stated here are mainly focused on the state space methods for uh, studying the internal model principle and robust output regulation. But uh, just as importantly, during the, all these years, there was a, there's been considerable amount of work done in the frequency domain. And these results are, uh, on the internal model principle are also applicable to several classes of PDE systems and the transfer functions describing such, such models. And again, the list here is mainly focused on the cover on extending the full kind of internal model principle, meaning the characterization of controllers for PDE systems. But during the years already from the beginning of the 80s, there have, there have been a considerable amount of and very of important work dealing just on, on the controller design aspects for solving the robust output regulation problems. And while these results do not necessarily always explicitly use the internal model principle, this is always at uh, the internal model design is always at the heart of these uh, controller design methods. So in particular, 
the controlled signs have uh, been introduced by various authors for large, large and important classes of linear PDEs described by distributed parameter systems, both with distributed and boundary control and observation. And especially the one of the state-of-the-art papers is the one by Rebar Baron Weiss from 2003, which basically solves the problem for all stable well-post linear systems. On the other hand, there has also been a lot of work done on solving the robust output regulation problem just for individual PDE models, and especially a lot of work uh, that I would want to mention here is due to Joachim Deutscher and his co-authors co and group members. And there's also been a lot of new developments over the last five or so years for different various kinds of PDEs and coupled systems and PDEs on networks and so on. And just uh, I have to say that this list is uh, just scratching the surface what has been done in this in this field and there's also a lot of it's worth mentioning that there's a lot of work that has been done on the uh, closely related problem which doesn't have this requirement uh, for robustness but uses usually similar types of controller design as well. So we already saw that the internal model principle can be used in controller design for robust output regulation. And for this, there, it's easy to come up with at least two very general approaches how this, uh, this can be utilized. One is that we can start out with the in individual PDE that we're interested in and then build our controller by first figuring out what kind of a general controller structure could give us the internal model that we need for this system and then add possible additional parts or other types of uh, parameter choices which would guarantee the closed loop stability for our, uh, for our feedback loop. Alternatively, we can use a more abstract route where we first represent our original PDE system as an abstract system on an infinite dimensional vector space uh, which allows us then to use the existing results on controller design for this class of linear systems. What I mean by abstract differential equations is are basically linear distributed parameter systems on either Banach or Hilbert spaces. And in this class of systems, the main operator A typically generates a strongly continuous semi-group on, on our state space X. And then the operators B, B, D and C are either bounded linear operators in the case where our system has distributed inputs and outputs or unbounded operators if our PDE system has boundary inputs, boundary disturbances and boundary measurements. This kind of a division for PDE based and abstract control design is of course very general and it can be applied to many different control problems but I still want to spend a little bit of time discussing this division and uh, these two approaches in the context of the robust output regulation problem because I feel that this um, control problem has some unique features which contribute to this, uh, this kind of a choice of what, which path to take. So beginning with the PDE based approach we already saw that if we start out with our PDE model we can figure out what kind of an internal model that we need and what kind of a structure for the controller would guarantee this for us. And then we can add some kind of, a, for example, PDE based observer design in order for closed loop to achieve the closed loop stability and arrive at a PDE controller which solves the robust output regulation problem. 
On the other hand, in the abstract route, we would begin with our original PDE and first find a representation in a suitable class of abstract systems. And once we have this abstract representation of our PDE model, ideally we have access to a large number of different types of controller designs which can be applied to this class of models. And these results typically come, out, come together with the kind of a general structure for the controller that we uh, are designing along with some kind of instructions on how to choose the controller parameters. And starting from PDE models, it's typical that the problem of choosing these parameters correctly can be uh, converted into some kind of PDE stabilization problems and so on. And, but after we have uh, applied our abstract controller design, we're le left with typically a controller, which is also an abstract system living on some infinite dimensional vector space. And if our uh, original goal is to get some kind of a PDE type controller, we should still need to do some kind of interpretation to convert our PDE dynamic, uh, abstract controller into a system with PDE dynamics. And at least visually, the abstract route here seems a little bit longer. So it's a relevant question what kind of benefits and disadvantages this this has compared to the design of controllers just for individual PDE models. And the first uh, real benefit of this abstract route is that once we have reached the representation of our PDE as an abstract system, then there's a variety of ready-made controller designs which can be used ideally almost like black box in order to solve the robust output regulation problem. The only sort of part here come it being the tuning and choosing of the controller parameters. So <clears throat> this kind of uh, use of uh, ready-made structures uh, especially guarantees the internal model structure of the controller and some kind of additional structure in order, which can be used in the closed loop stabilization. So especially if we're interested in solving the output regulation problem for several different PDE models, this can uh, help a lot in reducing repetition when we don't need to uh, start coming up with the internal model type structures from scratch every time we, we consider a new PDE model. And especially due to the internal models principle, the robust output regulation problem has a lot of this structure which can be uh, exploited in a very efficient way in this kind of abstract controller design where we can introduce controllers where uh, this general structure already uh, guarantees the internal model property for our controller and the additional structure can be used in the stabilization problem. Then finally, the cho choosing of these open and free controller parameters can be converted efficiently into PDE stabilization problems, where we can again benefit from the deep knowledge of our original PDE system. On the other hand, the abstract approach also has its downsides and one of the first ones relates to this first step in the process because converting a PDE model into an abstract differential equation can in many cases require fairly detailed knowledge of the abstract systems theory and it can be st still challenging. But the good news is that uh, 
for a lot of uh, large classes of important PDEs like diffusion equations, wave equations, beam equations with boundary control and distributed control this representation may already be known. So there's a lot of uh, results in the literature that can be used in helping with this first step. On the other hand, also in the last step, converting the abstract controller into a PDE controller can similarly require some uh, effort and knowledge of the abstract systems design. And I think this is one part which is hasn't been studied so much in the literature but I think there is there's a lot of things to do in making this step easier in the process but somehow still the take-home message is in, even in the abstract approach is that if we start out with a PDE model that we want to control and proceed this abstract route into an abstract controller then the app controller dynamics do still correspond to some kind of a PDE model so there's no magic conversion happening so that we would uh, for some reason uh, end up with a radically different type of controller than our original PDE model. And the obvious question then is when should we choose one of these uh, routes over another? So when should we choose or use the abstract approach? And this is typically in the situation where the conversions between the PDE model and the abstract systems are relatively easy and effortless. And this happens especially in the case where the PDE has distributed inputs and outputs irregardless of the spatial domains because in this situation the distributed parameter representation is usually fairly straightforward to come up with. Another relevant situation is when our PDE has a one-dimensional spatial domain because the vast majority of these kinds of PDE models, even with boundary control and observation, still are relatively well known in the literature and they can be uh, represented using existing results as abstract linear systems. Moreover, even on multidimensional domains, especially the PD, parabolic PDE models like convection, diffusion, reaction equations can often be represented as regular linear systems due to existing results in the literature. And finally, even if we're outside the scope of these regular linear systems, if our system is exponentially stable, and externally well posed then there's a very simple controller design which is actually an old finite dimensional controller which can be used in solving the robust output regulation problem. On the other hand there are also still situations where I would recommend just working with the individual PDE and this is especially the case if we're considering boundary control and observation of a PDE with multidimensional spatial domain uh, which is not does not belong to the class of parabolic systems. And in this situation the coming up with the abstract representation can really be challenging and also in general if the system is not externally well posed then it's also possible that the there are no abstract results that could be used for this particular class of systems. Okay, so we can now consider a particular PDE example and see how the abstract approach in controller design works. So let's consider a pure heat equation on a rectangular domain. And this system has Neumann boundary conditions having a boundary input at the bottom edge, part of the bottom edge of the spatial domain and the measured temperature is the temperature average on the top edge of the rectangle 
and finally we, we have an external disturbance signal entering from the left. And this PDE is unstable due to the Neumann boundary conditions, so it has a zero eigenvalue. And in addition, we can see clearly that the inputs and the outputs are non collocated. So, our first step in the abstract controller design is to figure out what kind of a class of systems is appropriate for our PDE model. Um, there's, uh, there's existing results on these types of models by Burns, Gilliam and Weiss from the early 2000s, which uh, give us the opportunity to represent our PDE as a so-called regular linear system. So the existing results tell us that the heat equation can be represented as a distributed parameter system on the L2 space over the rectangular domain. And here the input and output operators are unbounded. But actually uh, for this controller design method, it's not necessary to know explicitly what the input and output operators are. But instead we can go through the design process of the controller uh, based on simply the knowledge that this kind of a representation exists. And because we're in the uh, regular linear systems class, there are existing results on solvability and controller design for robust output regulation. And the good news here is that our heat equation does have both of these properties and this is just checkable from our PDE model. So this means that we can go into the step two of our controller design, which is the abstract controller design. And for this, we have a few options available. And this controller has two parts, one of them being a finite dimensional linear differential equation determined, whose dynamics are determined by matrices G1 and G2. And the other part is an infinite dimensional linear system on the space X. And this uh, has the form of a kind of a Leuenberger type observer and it's used in the achieving the closed loop stabilization. So this controller uh, has an explicit form and the its parameters are this G1 and G2 as well as these bounded operators L, K1 and K2. So the, what is left to do in this controller design process is to find these values for these open parameters. And considering the kinds of reference and disturbance signals that we do with our known frequencies and unknown amplitudes and phases, the matrices G1 and G2 can actually be constructed explicitly just based on the information about the uh, frequencies in the in the signals as well as the number of exp independent outputs which in our case is equal to one. And these matrices G1 and G2 actually contain the internal model of our controller. And the rest of the parameters of the system are then near chosen in such a way that the closed loop system will be stable. And there's a tuning method for these parameters. In particular, the operator L should be uh, chosen in such a way that the system under output injection is exponentially stable. And the last two parameters are chosen to achieve feedback stabilization for a, a cascade system consisting of part of the plant together with the, this internal model ODE part. And in order to achieve the stability of both these systems, there are several alternatives available from our, uh, for our heat equation system. One approach is to use the system fact that our abstract system represents a heat equation to rewrite both of these systems uh, 
uh, stabilization problems for the PDE and a PDE OD cascade. But because we're dealing with a heat equation, it's possible to use Golurkin type approximations like finite elements to reduce, uh, in order to design these parameters L and K using the solutions of finite dimensional uh, linear quadratic control methods. And this is especially due to Banks and Ito from 97. Alternatively, more generally, even for non-parabolic systems, it's possible to explicitly stabilize the ladder cascade system using the so-called forwarding approach, uh, which de deals with stabilization of cascades. And as shown in our, uh, or explored in our uh, very recent work with Jukka Pekka Humaloja, it's also possible to combine numerics uh, with the forwarding approach to reduce this uh, stabilization of this cascade uh, to solving a finite number of uh, boundary value problems related to the original PDE system. So when these parameters are chosen, we have an abstract controller. So in the last step, we would also like to find a PDE version of this controller. And this is something that I looked into with Jukka Pekka Humaloja just this year and uh, investigated how this last step can be done in a, in a rigorous manner. And using these results, it is indeed possible to determine the corresponding PDE controller uh, corresponding to a, which solves the robust output regulation problem. And in this PDE controller, we still have the same ODE part as in our original abstract controller. But now the state of the infinite dimensional part is instead a weak solution of a, of a PDE model, which is of similar type as our original heat equation on the rectangle. So this indeed concludes our abstract path where we've started with a PDE controller, proceeded from via the abstract domain to find some kind of a controller and then made our way back from the abstract domain to the PDE world to arrive at a final PDE type controller. We can also do numerical simulations to verify that our controller work, even though these, of course, use numerical approximations. And at this point, it's perhaps relevant to advertise that in our group, we have developed a fully featured uh, MATLAB and Python toolboxes for uh, control design for robust output regulation. And in particular, this ROAR pack includes uh, high-level routines for constructing internal model-based controllers. And you can choose different ways of tuning the controller parameters. And you also have uh, routines for simulating the closed-loop system behavior and visualizing your results uh, for several types of different PDE test cases that I've already implemented in the in the package and we're adding more as we explore different PDEs as well. And all of this you can find uh, in GitHub as open source. So this concludes the first part of the talk and in the second part I'm going to describe um, a little bit in greater detail some results that we've recently obtained for particularly for parabolic PDE models. And in this part, we'll directly start from the abstract model or distributed parameter system, where we assume that our operator A generates a possibly unstable analytic semi-group on a Hilbert space X. And this is something that's especially true in the case of convection diffusion reaction equations on one and multi-dimensional spatial domains, 
but also for beams and plates with this Kelvin void type damping. And in addition here we assume that the operators B and C and are bounded and so typically we're mostly interested in considering distributed input and output operators in this theory. So in the first part of the talk we already saw how to solve the robust output regulation for this class of um, distributed parameter systems but the main downside of the controller that we got is that it's also a PDE model so it has infinite dimensional dynamics. But on the other hand most of the relevant types of PDE systems in this class have finite dimensional uh, uh, unstable parts and this raises the obvious question uh, that can we find a controller to solve the robust output regulation problem within the class of ODE model controllers so with finite dimensional dynamics? And this is a question that has been studied before by a number of authors. And this includes very early work by Schumacher and his PhD supervisor Ruth Curtin. And their work contained fairly strict structural conditions on the plan, but they, they got their design to work nevertheless. Then Joachim Deutscher has done work on this with this kinds of dual observer type controllers, but the controller problem he was solving was this uh, di didn't have this robustness requirement. And Pretty simultaneously to our work, the, there was work by Hemi and Prieur uh, based on eigenmode decompositions for the operator, uh, operator A. And the result that I'm presenting here is controller design, which has several nice aspects. First of all, it's internal based control, so it does has, have the natural robustness properties. And it's also applicable for general parabolic systems without, uh, uh, for a, which is a very cl general class of systems with several different kinds of models without any structural assumptions. On the other hand, it also uh, is fairly direct in the sense that it utilizes Galerkin approximations so it doesn't require any knowledge of something like eigenfunctions of the uh, main differential operator which can be really tricky to obtain for multidimensional PDEs over, over domains that do not have a specific uh, geometry. And finally, we also combine to a controller design a model reduction step, which ensures that or facilitates the uh, obtaining low dimensional controllers. And as on the previous slide, we assume that for here that the, our control and observation operators are bounded, but there are also, ver we also have versions for our control design for boundary control systems. So let's begin by setting up our standing assumptions. So we consider a distributed parameter system and a parabolic one and we in particular assume that the system operator A is determined by a Sesky linear form on a Hilbert space V which is uh, a little bit smaller than the than our original space X. And we assume that the sesky linear form A is both bounded and coercive, which is true in the case where for a large class of elliptic type oper differential operators. And with these properties we have that our shifted operator A generates an analytic semi-group and uh, 
this is these assumptions in general are true for a lot of uh, large classes of convection diffusion reaction equations so multi-dimensional domains as well and the second part of our assumptions deals with the existence of a suitable Galerkin type approximation for our system and in particular we assume that uh, there exists uh, subspaces Vn of the space V where our uh, original sesquilinear form is defined, each finite dimensional, such that any element of the space V can be approximated uh, with arbitrary accuracy with elements in these subspaces Vn in, when measured in the norm of the original space V. And this is an assumption which is based, uh, which defines usually a numerical scheme and this is something that's the, uh, naturally satisfied for example for finite element and even finite difference type approximations. And when we have the existence of our approximating subspaces Vn, we can define a finite dimensional Galerkin approximation of our original system simply by projecting our operators to the finite dimensional spaces Vn. And our main intention then here is to use the knowledge of these Galerkin approximations of our system in designing a controller which is, uh, solves the robust output regulation problem for our original uh, infinite dimensional PDE system. And our results state that this is indeed possible and uh, the controller and, and this can be done with a controller with structure shown here. So also this controller has a state which contains two parts. The first uh, part is determined by an ODE system with parameters G1 and G2, again containing a suitable internal model for our uh, reference and disturbance signals. But now also the second part of the control dynamics is a finite dimensional differential equation determined by matrices uh, shown here. And along with this general structure of our controller, our result introduces a design algorithm for these seven open parameters that are, uh, that are determined the controller dynamics. And this design algorithm uh, utilizes the knowledge of the frequencies of the reference and disturbance signals, which are assumed to be known, then the Galerkin approximation of our PDE model, and then finally the uh, some kind of a dimension parameter for which determines the uh, final dimension of our controller. So I won't go through the details of the design algorithm uh, because this is this can be found in the papers and I also have a separate YouTube video which comments on the design algorithm but I'm instead I'll just highlight the two aspects that are most important for it. So first of all like we already saw in our previous uh, controller design the similarly the matrices G1 and G2 actually have very explicit formulas which are only based on the knowledge of the frequencies of the reference and disturbance signals along with the knowledge of the number of outputs that our system has. And then the final five uh, uh, parameters of our controller are obtained based on the based on the Galerkin approximation of our PDE model and this is done by first solving some finite dimensional linear quadratic uh, control and filter equations 
and then uh, applying a balanced truncation to a very specific stable ODE system. And obviously both of, when we do know our finite dimensional Galakuin approximation, both of these steps can be done efficiently within MATLAB with built-in routines. And when we use this control structure and design algorithm, our main result then states that if the uh, order n of the Galerkin approximation and the model reduction dimension parameter r are both sufficiently large, then this finite dimensional controller solves the robust output regulation problem for our original PDE system. And in particular, the, the convergence of the re output to the reference signal is exp exponential with exponent alpha. And uh, a few comments on this result are in order. So first of all, the uniform exponential growth rate, uh, decay rate for the uh, tracking error can be designed in the controller design parameter uh, within the bounds that the system here, the shifted system here should be both exponentially stabilizable and detectable. And this step is already part of the controller design algorithm. And the main perhaps drawback of this result of this form is that this expression of or requirement that the uh, dimensions n and r should be sufficiently large is highly inconvenient. But of course in all of this generality where we don't assume anything, any particular type of PD model or a, or the approximation scheme, it's possible, impossible to derive any more specific conditions. But on the other hand, making this condition more concrete in the case of specific uh, approximation schemes like finite elements is something that is uh, a very important topic for future research. But it's still possible to analyze this a bit uh, because the required size of the model reduction parameter r depends roughly on the rate of decay for the Hankel singular values of the Galerkin approximation and for large uh, for very typical diffusion equations and convection diffusion equations this decay is relatively fast which also indicates that we can often reduce quite a lot the, the dimension of the controller. And so in addition to this general result I want to describe how it can and has been used in the control of specific PDE models. So in this last part of the talk I want to describe some PhD work by my former PhD student Konsta Huhtala who just finished his PhD in the spring term this year. And the main topic of Consta's work was the control of temperatures and flow velocities in two-dimensional domains for PDE models describing the dynamics of incompressible fluids. So a typical situation in his work, he would consider a model of a two-dimensional let's say a room where we have uh, specific walls and some kind of general geometry and then we consider the temperature and the velocity field of the of the air inside the room and we have some kind of an inflow of the air from one uh, aperture of in the on the walls of the domain and then an outflow of the air from another one and these inflow and outflow create 
uh, the velocity field for the fluid inside the domain. And then Gwansta is also interested in temperature distribution of this fluid. And in his work he considered a few such models of this type. Uh, typically he would have a temperature control and perhaps a control flow the, for the flow of the velocity either at the boundary or inside the domain and then he would measure the temp uh, both the temperature and the velocity of the fluid either again at, the, at a boundary point or uh, inside the spatial domain and these models would also include distant turbulence signals caused by let's say uh, additional windows uh, or radiative heaters in the in the room or its boundaries. So Consta indeed considered a class of these types of uh, temperature and flow tracking problems in his thesis and he was able to solve the corresponding tracking and disturbance rejection problems really specifically using this kind of reduced order controller design that I just introduced in this talk. And rather than going into the details of the mathematical models at this late stage of the presentation, I just simply want to describe in general terms what each of the stages of his PhD work entailed and so in the first part of his work on this topic, Consta focused solely on the control of the temperature distribution of the fluid in the situation where the uh, velocity field is constant and it's steady state. So to this end he considered the convection diffusion equation uh, with a fixed velocity field but of course this velocity field in this kind of a room configuration wouldn't have an explicit expression but instead it's given by a solution of the steady state Navier-Stokes equation. And for this model he uh, designed a reduced order controller and I'm also going to show you some simulations on this model a little bit later. In the second part of his work he took this uh, first part a little bit further in order to consider the tracking of both temperature and the velocity of the fluid. And he still stayed in the linear setting but now he considered the flu temperature and velocity being modeled by the linearized Businesque equations. So uh, in these equations, in the nonlinear versions, uh, these equations describe how the uh, velocity and temperature uh, interact and the dynamics of the temperature and velocity affect each other. And Consta controlled the version of these equations which is linearized around uh, steady state solution. Uh, in this model he also considered boundary control and observation which for the PDE model uh, creates um, unbounded input and output operators. But in this control setting Consta also added models for actuators and sensors for the uh, original uh, fluid flow system and this uh, addition we, while it's also practically relevant also has the effect that the full cascade system that Consta is studying actually has bounded input and output operators so he was still able to use the same controller design result that that he and that I've shown you in this talk. And finally, in the last part of his thesis, he focused on a 
tracking problem for only the flow dynamics, the fluid flow dynamics. But in this situation, he was actually considering the control of a nonlinear model, PD. And here he, he, was, he was using a nonlinear controller design method as well, which was based on a fairly recent controller design work by Vivek Natra and Joseph Benzman, uh, which is applicable to a class of so-called regular nonlinear systems. Okay, and as the very last part, I want to uh, show you a simulation of the room temperature controls. So in this simulation example, we consider a reference signal consisting of two frequency components and then we, we can, in addition, have a disturbance signal with a third type of frequency. And I'm considering the model that Consta studied first, so this is a convection diffusion equation where the velocity field is in its steady state determined by the Navier-Stokes equations. And we do have in-domain control acting near the inflow of the fluid and we also here have the disturbance signal up to the temperature and then we uh, want to track the measurement uh, average temperature over this small subdomain of the spatial domain. So for the reduced order controller design we need some information so first one is the frequencies of the of the reference and disturbance signals and the way we've expressed these we we can see, easily see that these will be one two and three and our control input is one dimensional so this is also relevant to the design of the internal model and the simulations were carried by const, carried out by consta and he used fem approximation of the of the PDE model with second order basis functions resulting in a Galerkin or FEM approximation with dimension of roughly 5, 1500. And the controller design that he used is uh, implementable in MATLAB and it's also implemented directly in, in our ROARPAC software. And with suitable uh, adjustments of the uh, model reduction parameter, Consta found that uh, it's possible to eventually reduce the controller to have a total dimension of 16, where six dimensions come from the internal model of the reference and disturbance signals, and then the additional observer type part uh, ha has dimension 10. And constantly simulations for this model and in order to emulate the situation that we're considering uh, you know, controlling uh, the actual uh, PDE system he used uh, a higher dimensional uh, approximation for for the plant dynamics in the simulations and in his setup he found that the controller he designed achieved a stability margin or exponential decay rate of the tracking error with exponent roughly 0 0.5. Just to make a small comment on the actual controller, in the situation with the parameters that Consta was studying, the original PD model is actually exponentially stable so it is also possible to use some other existing techniques for finite dimensional controller design. And one of the principal choices for this is the so-called low gain simple controller where the dynamics are only determined by the internal model. But the disadvantage of this controller is that due to the low gain aspect, usually the uh, achievable convergence rate for the tracking error can be very very modest. 
and this is also the case here and whereas the reduced order controller achieved a convergence rate with exponent of roughly one half the exponent of convergence of the low gain controller is always uh, can be at most roughly 0 0.1. So here's also a short simulation of the controlled system behavior. So on one figure you can see the behavior of the controlled temperature distribution and in the, on the other side you can see the behavior of the output when it converges to the intended reference signal. So this brings me to the conclusion of my talk. So in part one, I've uh, discussed the sort of the fundamental aspects of the robust output regulation for PDE models. And then I've also compared different approaches to that can be taken for controller design for concrete PDE models. Then on the other hand, in the second part, I've discussed more specifically some recent results we've uh, obtained for in the control of parabolic PDE models using finite dimensional and reduced order controllers. And I've also described how these results have already been used in our, in our group in the control of temperatures and fluid flow models. And finally here are some references and links so the first two references are taken from my work on the internal model principle for uh, PDE models and classes of distributed parameter systems. The third reference is on our recent work which discusses this, uh, the application of this abstract controller design approach to output regulation of PDE models. Uh, and then the last two references are, are on this reduced order controller design for parabolic systems, as well as on Consta's work on the uh, control of thermal fluid flow models. And at the bottom of the page, you can also find links where you can access our Roarpack software package and all the preprints of our, our articles can also be found at our research group's web pages. So thank you very much for listening and have a good day.